your website built with AI doesn't need to look like shit. People are usually concerned with the content and features of their website instead of its design. When the design isn't about it just being pretty. It's about professionalism, which reflects on its trust and trust reflects on sales. So a better design definitely equals more sales. And you can have a professional website by just specifying inside of your prompt the right tools for your AI to use. First on the list is definitely Tailwind. So the main thing you need to know about Tailwind is that it maintains patterns that you don't really need to recreate it or you don't need to let the AI recreate patterns that are already established. For example, this pulse animation right here could be recreated by the AI using pure CSS, but the majority of time you don't want to keep reinventing the wheel. You'll just go with animate pulse and make that specific element have that pulse animation. So the first thing about Tailwind CSS is that it has design patterns already set up that you don't really have to worry about. And the second thing I'd say is less code. So since it abstracts away all the CSS into just a simple class like animate pulse, that means you won't have another file just for CSS and that the LM will have a much nicer time finding and applying the changes that you need related to design. Now, the third reason is because of its integration. Integrations. It integrates with a lot of different tools, especially with tools like Shad CN UI, which is definitely the second tool that I recommend while building any website. And if you want more details on how to install the complete stack that uses Next.js, Tailwind, and Shad CN, check out this video right here. But for now, let's let the AI handle everything. It can type in all the commands. I really don't like to do this approach since it's really easy to type in some commands. It's always the same process. You just need to repeat those commands. Letting the AI do this part is kind of wasting its context, if you know what I mean. But since I want to test what it create with a single prompt, I will ask it to configure the entire project. Now, before I continue, let me give you a quick spoiler of what we'll be building in this video. I'm trying to get this right in a single prompt. Not sure if it will work. It hardly ever works in that single prompt. Usually there's an issue with Tailwind or an issue with uh, maybe like Next.js images, but I'll show you how to fix that if that does happen. The entire prompt will be in the description and I try to use all the tools that I talk about in this video so you get a preview of how it can actually be used inside of Cursor. So while this is building, let's head over to Shad CN and understand how this component library can help us build better looking websites. If you go over to the components page, for example, you can select, uh, let's say, popover and the popover works basically like this. You can select that button and this will open up. If you were to create this using pure CSS, it would take much longer, even if it's just the AI building it. And that isn't even the problem. Getting it in this structure and this styling would take you a longer time. So just go with Shad CN. Cursor and the LLM you're using should be smart enough to understand these commands, use it and get the component from Shad CN over in the code base. Yes, there are different component libraries out there that you could use. There are even paid ones, but what makes Chad CN really good is that it's highly customizable. You're not stuck with this specific animation. So for example, when I hover my cursor on top of this button, I want it to become a pointer cursor and not stay as the default cursor. And this is just an example of what can be adjusted. Inside of the prompt for this app that I'm building, I specified that I wanted a specific style. Even though it's using these components from Chad CN, it's going to adapt these components to use my specific style. But we'll get to that in just a bit. And while we're talking, it's pretty much done. I'll wait till the end of the video so we can check it out because there's still two features from Shad CN that I believe to be very important and that are overlooked sometimes. One of them is the charts. So you have all these charts over here. So especially when you're dealing with a lot of data, you'll want to illustrate that data because just glancing at this bar chart, for example, I have an idea of what's going on with the data it has. The second thing I want to show from Shad CN is the skeleton component because a lot of websites use Shad CN, but they don't take advantage of this skeleton component, which is a much better way for for you to display that a component is loading instead of just displaying a loading message in text. And just by specifying over to the LM that you want to use a skeleton for the loading states, just prompts it to expect these loading states and handle them gracefully. So back here to the mess of a drawing I'm building here, let's note down our third topic, which is the AI SDK from Versal. I think the best way to show you how this works is showing something in execution. So for example, help me book a flight. If I click on that, uh, 
uh, the message sent was help me book a flight from San Francisco to London. And then this nice interface loads. So you'll see that this is a chatbot, but it's using a pretty nice design to talk back to me and let me actually interact with its answer. So if I want a 6 a.m. to 1 p.m. flight, I can click on that. It'll understand that I clicked on that and now it'll offer me which are the seats available in this flight. Then again, I can interact and click on, let's say this seat right here, 3C and what's the passenger name? I can type in Leonardo. Now, obviously this is just mock-up data for this website, but you can actually implement this by using the Versal. AI SDK. Since this is something very new, sometimes the AI will have a hard time understanding what to do because its training doesn't have part of the data to use the AI SDK. I like to specify in the prompt that for the chatbot, use AI SDK from Vercel, and then I specify that specific page inside of their documentation that explains how to integrate it with Next.js. So if you're building an AI chatbot, definitely consider using the AI SDK from Vercel. Now let's move on to the coolest component library of all, Asset. Eternity. I think that's how it's written. Let me grab that, head over to Google. I believe these components were created based on Chad CN. Most of them are free. And just so you get an example of what I'm talking about, it seems like just an ordinary component, but then when you interact with it, you'll see that it's no ordinary component. You can actually have a pretty nice interaction just be careful to not overdo this in your website because it can make your website have a really bad performance depending on how many of these things are inside of it. So if you're not careful, you might really overdo it and it'll look like you really tried to make a professional website but failed massively. Take a look at these components yourself. You'll find out that there are a lot of different things that you can add to your website, especially if it's a landing page. So yeah, as eternity equals cool component. Let's move on to our fifth tool. And this specific tool is really important, but some people overlook this and let the AI create whatever it wants. And usually it uses the worst icons possible. So what I'm talking about here is the Lucid React icon library. It's basically a library full of icons. And since this library has been around for a pretty long time, I believe most LMs have this in their training and they already know which icons are available to use in every situation. For example, in my prompt, the only thing I said was use Lucid React for icons whenever needed. Because if I don't specify this, it'll likely use the HTML icons and they they suck. Now our sixth tip is design patterns. And what I mean about design patterns, basically forms and colors. These are very important and you should specify this over in your prompt to build whatever website you want to build. Or else this is what I'd say is the determining factor that could make your website look very generic. So yeah, design patterns. I used Claude to search for different design forms. And as I say, each one of them, I'll show an image so you have an idea of what are these specific forms. We have neomorphism, glassmorphism, brutalism, minimalism, flat design, Bauhaus, Art Deco, Swiss International Style, Memphis Design, Retro Vintage, and Vaporwave, but these aren't the only ones. And my camera's battery went out, so this is two hours after the last take. Continuing on, we have the colors. So monochromatic schemes, I won't show them here because they are really self-explanatory. Black and white, grayscale, sepia tone, single color monochromatic. If This is very personal and customizable, but to ensure that you're creating a nice palette color, you can always use the Adobe palette color generator where you could basically toggle around different colors and it'll give you the full palette color suggestion. And if you're using something as customizable as this, you'll want to pass this hex over inside of your prompt so that the LM understands which colors it should use, which is the primary color, which is the secondary and all of that. But if you just want to go with a pattern like navy and gold, you can just specify that inside of your prompt. In the prompt for the app we're building, all I specified was focus on a neomorphism soft UI design. To do so, try Try to change either the globals.css or the shadcn components to ensure consistent styling. The coloring should be light mode with dark ascents. So again, always remember to specify forms and colors while designing your website. Now finally back to our app, as you can see, I have placed only one prompt here and it took about like 10 minutes to create the entire app. I still don't know if it's running correctly, but let's test it out with NPM run dev and it should open up in the window here at the side. Okay, we have an issue, but the design seems pretty good. If you look down here, the Saturnity component seems pretty solid. And then we have the negotiation bot. I have already added the .env, it's basically an open OpenAI API key that gives your project access to uh, any OpenAI LLM. 
So if you've already read through the prompt, you know that this is kind of a gamification that allows the user to try to get a coupon and drag the price down so it should have a pretty nice interaction between the bot and this uh, product price card. So let me first just send in a hi. Okay, apparently it scrolled all the way down uh, the main scroll instead of just the negotiation bot scroll. Hi there, just a friendly reminder that I'm not here to negotiate a sweet deal for you. But first I need to know on a scale of one to 10, how enthusiastic are are you about AI and building projects? Let's see if you can earn some discounts. Just give me a discount. I'm gonna try to be a bit mean. I need to see some enthusiasm. How about you tell me about an AI project that you're excited about, or maybe something you've built? Let's get that energy flowing. Yeah, so at this point, I'm really just testing it out to see if it changes the price up there, because depending on how it reacts to whatever I say or how it tries to change that price, that's something else that I should specify in my prompt. And that way I'll be taking the most out of each prompt. Okay, I sent another message. Let's see if he considers this something worthy of a discount. Let's see if we can bump that discount up a notch. You're definitely showing some serious enthusiasm. I'd say you're around eight on the enthusiasm scale. Keep it up now. Tell me what's the coolest tool or project you've helped someone build through your channel. Let's see if we can bump that discount up a notch. Okay, sent the message. Yeah, it's pretty fast. Like it's getting back pretty fast. Okay, so it got me a discount of 30% discount, but tell me, actually, I think you've earned a solid, yeah, it seems like it didn't decide yet. I think you've earned a solid 30% discount, but tell me, what's your next big project? Let's, if you give me a coupon, I'll build the next open AI. Let's see. Okay, nice. So this took six messages, but after I told it that I'd build the next open AI and that it would be similar to Anthropic, then it finally gave me a 35% off coupon. And this design is honestly pretty awesome. Now let's see if I continue talking to it, maybe be rude to it, uh, if it will drop the discount like down, if it will like remove that discount. Okay, I tried being mean to it, but it didn't remove the discount. Let me prompt it to remove the discount. Okay, so it removed the discount and I guess it has access to this particular object. This just needs some tweaking around. Yeah, so this is my only prompt to fix this. I sent a print screen of the issue and also when I receive or send a message in the chat bot, the main scroll is scrolling down instead of the chat bot scroll. Additionally, make sure the AI alters the discount even after initially decided on one and make sure the design reflects the changes. If it removes the discount, then the design should go back to the initial state. Let's see if it fixes everything. It seems to be working fine without that previous hydration error. Let's test the chat. Uh, want a coupon? Talk to me. Let me say hi. Okay, the scroll didn't go down for the main page scroll. So from one to 10, for sure it's a 10. Nice, so the scroll went down here. Okay, the animation for the product seems pretty clean. Yeah, it gave me the discount in the second message. So this surely needs some tweaking around, but the video is focused on the design. And for me, this design is pretty awesome. That is it for today. If you have any tool that you recommend using to improve the design while using an AI to build your website, please let us know down in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if it helped you and I'll see you in the next video. Till then.